VHS Sports TV and the Belmont Media Center are proud to bring you exclusive coverage of Belmont High School varsity football. Live from Harris Field in Belmont, we bring you Friday Night Lights as the 2-2 two two Marauders take on the 1-3 Lexington Minutemen in a matchup of Middlesex League rivals, both in search of their second consecutive win to open the Liberty Division portion of their schedules. And a good Friday evening, everyone. My name is Todd Bloniars, joined as always by BHS Sports TV executive producer Jeremy Meserve, who may also be manning our camera this evening. Uh, depending on if we have additional crew on hand. Also joining me alongside on tonight's broadcast is another BHS student and BMC volunteer who is making his on-air debut tonight, Ben Shelnitsky, a freshman at uh, Belmont High School. Uh, good to have you here tonight, Ben. Thank you, Todd. I'm very excited to be here. We got the teams out right now, uh, right, uh, just about ready for the, uh, the coin toss. And in fact, I think uh, they just are <laughs> they're showing the captains right now, which... Uh, which side is which, and of course, Lexington will uh, call it in the air. And uh, actually, I think they've already called it, and uh, uh, they have, uh, I think, deferred? Or are they, well, they're gonna be, uh, yeah, I think they did defer. They're gonna be kicking off to start things. Uh, so that means Belmont's offense will be on the track first. Uh, uh, actually, uh, Ben, you had a chance to see a little bit of the uh, the broadcast a couple of weeks ago, uh, the game, uh, the, the tight game with Westford. Any thoughts on, on that one? That it was saw? a very close game. Yeah, no, it was it was definitely uh, a back and forth affair, and uh, Westford pulled away a little bit late. Actually, it's interesting we we start with that game to kind of build you up to what the Marauders did last week at Winchester because. Two weeks ago when we broadcast the Westford game, Belmont fell behind by two scores late, had a very long drive to get a touchdown to get within one, one score, but then they couldn't make a defensive stop and Westford essentially ran out the clock and then put up an insurance touchdown. Um, this time, well, well, last week out at Winchester, Marauders were down 9 nothing going into the fourth quarter against the Red and Black and were able to uh, put together another long drive, got a touchdown to get it to 9-7. I believe that was a Jaden Arno touchdown run. And then... Uh, the Marauders' defense came and made a key stop. Give a little plug here for uh, Franklin Tucker, the uh, Belmontonian, who said the entire Belmont defensive line sacked the Winchester quarterback <laughs> to get the ball back for the offense, who then went down the field and uh, scored the uh, winning touchdown. Uh, Adrian Garung getting the winning score with just a couple of minutes left uh, as he uh, rushed for uh, almost 100 yards in that game. Marauders coming back after being shut out through three quarters at Winchester, came back, put up 15 in the fourth quarter to win that one by a final of 15-9. to nine. A little bit of an upset. Winchester went into that game at 3-0. and Marauders were only 1-2. Uh, and two. So uh, a bit of an upset. And uh, actually, it might have been Belmont that won the toss because it looks like they're kicking off. And uh, either way, Belmont's going to have the ball to start the third quarter. They're kicking off right now. That's Austin Lasseter. And he will squib one down the field right to left. And one of the up men. And now the ball's loose. It was not handled cleanly by the Lexington return man that was playing up front. And I believe the Marauders have recovered. Little uh, little fumbling of the ball there uh, by number 44, Alex Manson of Lexington. And the Marauders are able to take advantage. So, well, I guess we are going to see the Marauders offense on the field first here, Ben, as uh, they get an early turnover. Interestingly enough, two weeks ago when we were here, uh, a game between Belmont and Westford, we had zero turnovers through the entire ball game, which is a bit rare for a high school game. It was a very cleanly played game. And uh, here we have one right off the bat on the opening kickoff. So Marauders are going to get the ball first and 10 at the Lexington 32-yard line. Trying to kind of capitalize on the momentum they had uh, uh, with their uh, their win last week. Jaden Arno, of course, is the uh, quarterback. Uh, we talked a couple weeks ago, Arno, uh, and uh, he's a captain. Adrian Garung, also a senior captain. And uh, the two of them we thought would be a big part of this offense, and appropriately they scored the two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Here's Garung on first down, and uh, he gets about seven or eight yards on a strong carry uh, to the right side. That'll bring up second down and short. We mentioned Garung uh, had, uh, well, he had the, uh, the touchdown, uh, the game-winning touchdown last week at Winchester, and we're actually going to have a whistle because we have a uh, Lexington player down. Now uh, that might be... Uh, I'm going to say, is that number uh, number two, is it? Uh, that is number two. That would be uh, Dylan Lane, who uh, is listed on the, uh, the roster as a uh, linebacker and a uh, junior. And he's still being tended to by uh, the Lexington trainers. So, Ben, what do you, uh, I mean, 
you think we're just probably going to see more of a steady dose of Garung? You think the Belmont offense wants to try to uh, establish things uh, with uh, Garung early and then uh, then let Jaden maybe uh, put the ball in the air a little bit? I think they're going to be running the ball a lot. Yeah, I mean, they've got the offensive line to... Uh, to do that, uh, you know, I, most of the line is intact here. Uh, Marauders uh, come into this one, as we said, uh, you know, two and two with the uh, the win last week at Winchester. And uh, Marauders also have got some pretty good success against Lexington in recent years. They've won three of the last four, including uh, each of the last two years they have won. Uh, head coach Brian McRae coming into the uh, game in his third season has never uh, lost against Lexington, perfect 2-0 and against them. Rodgers winning at Lexington last year, 35-20. to 20. Uh, Two years ago in a game we would have broadcast for you here, Marauders were victorious 14-3. to three. Uh, Early on in the uh, the Coach McCray era, um, the uh, uh, Dylan Lane, the Lexington player, has uh, been taken off the field. I think he needed a little bit of assistance there, so... Uh, Marauders have this ball, looks like at about the 24 yard line. So it's gonna be second down and we'll call it two as Garung picked up eight yards on first down. Marauders in their spread offense. They've got two receivers split to each side. It's uh, Hallway and Ars Valone uh, split to the near side. And here's Arda with his first pass attempt of the game, looking for Logan in the deep corner. He's what a got touchdown. it! Touchdown Marauders! Brian Logan. And uh, he literally uh, made the, uh, the, the game-clinching interception last week at Winchester, picking up where he left off here in the uh, first minute, not even, yeah, first 36 seconds, scores a touchdown, a 24-yard pass from Arno, and the Riders take the early 6-0 lead. I mean, it's, it's you know, Arno and uh, Logan have really had great chemistry all year, wouldn't you say? I agree. And we've got Austin Lasseter now getting ready to kick the extra point. A little bit of a high snap, but he, the ball is down and the it's kick good. is good. It is good. The kick is good for Austin Lasseter. Teams will come back upfield. With 11.24 remaining here in the first quarter, Marauders scoring 36 seconds in thanks to the uh, fumble recovery on the opening kickoff. And then on two plays, they managed to go 34 yards, or uh, 32 yards, I should say capped off by the 24-yard pass. Arno to Logan, and the Marauders take the early lead. I think when you looked at these two teams, there was, at least in the preseason, uh, you know, polls and the capsules of these teams, I'm sure Coach McCray and even a lot of Marauders fans probably looked at this game as a winnable game. Lexington's had some great programs in the past. They've had some really talented players in the past. Not too... Not too long ago uh, in the past either, and I'm going to bring up a highlight that maybe Marauder fans don't want to remember, but I'm going to save that one for a little bit later uh, in the uh, broadcast. Uh, but uh, this was a game I think the Marauders looked at and said, you know, even, the, like I say, the fans, uh, everyone thought they had a chance to win. Here's another squibbed kickoff, and so obviously something in the playbook. There's another bobble, uh, but this time I believe, and I think it was kicked to 44 again. Manson this time is able to... Uh, recover it cleanly, so Lexington is going to get the ball. But very interesting here, Ben, that uh, Lassiter is choosing not to kick the ball deep. We saw him kick the ball deep against Westford, so we know he can do it. But he's, he's squibbing these kicks, and he seems to be like taking an aim at Alex Manson of the Minutemen. Uh, there must have been some kind of scouting report on him, and of course he did fumble the, uh, the first kickoff. This time handles it cleanly, so uh, we'll see Lexington go to work here from, uh, looks like their own 28-yard line. First down and 10 for their third-year head coach, Shane Wilson. And here is uh, their quarterback uh, with a long pass down. It's gonna be intercepted! intercepted. Casey Regan, sophomore, on a uh, ball that was underthrown by, I believe that was, uh, I think that was Adam O'Shaughnessy. O'Shaughnessy, uh, the uh, quarterback. Uh, Lexington actually employs two different quarterbacks, uh, per se, and he uh, underthrew that one, and uh, nice play again by Casey Regan, and the Rodgers get their second turnover within the first minute of the ball game. Rodgers have a chance to put this game, uh, you know, maybe out of reach early if they can keep playing this kind of opportunistic defense and if the offense can continue to click along. First and 10 outside the Lexington 38-yard line. 
And here is Arno, uh, as usual, in the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Adrian Garung on first down. Big hole! What a run. Adrian Garung, he's off to the races, and he will score! Touchdown! A touchdown for the Marauders! My goodness, the Marauders have won, run three offensive plays from scrimmage, and in 57 seconds have scored two touchdowns and lead 13-0. Your thoughts on that one, Ben? I mean, again, what a hole there, huh? I mean. That was a really great run by Agent Grong. Right now, we see them going for the field goal. Uh, extra point. Uh, point after here is uh, Austin Lassiter. Ball that time at the snap is low, and that uh, Ars Falone's going to have to throw this, and they're going to get the good. two point conversion to Donovan Hallway. So even when things go a little bit wrong for the Marauders in this opening minute of the ball game, they, it's something, it works out for them, and they get two points instead of one. So with 11.03 to go here in the first quarter, it is Belmont 15 and Lexington nothing. And all I can say right now, Ben, is I feel bad for all of the late arriving fans here who I know are still probably trying to make their way in to Harris Field. Because they've missed a lot already. Yeah. Belmont has an early lead. It was Again, that was a 38-yard run by Adrian Garung who ran for close to 100 yards last week and had the uh, the game-winning touchdown. And uh, last year had a, a strong season running the ball. A lot of seniors on this uh, Belmont squad, 18 in total. Six of them are captains. That would be, of course, uh, the aforementioned Garung along with quarterback Jaden Arno, Brian Logan, who had the uh, first touchdown as we have another squibbed kick. And again... Uh, this time it's going to be, uh, looks like it was uh, number 11, Nigel Ntwatwa, who makes the uh, recovery. But, uh, boy, I'm, I'm having several different flashbacks at once here, Ben. One of the flashbacks I'm having with all these squibbed kickoffs is the Thanksgiving Day game. Uh, the Marauders, uh, when they played Watertown in like zero degree temperatures, and I believe that game was in 2019, I think. 2018, 2019, boy, the years all kind of run together uh, when you get to be my age, Ben. And, uh, but uh, that was a, uh, uh, they, they were squibbing kicks and uh, Watertown kept fumbling the ball. I'm sorry, uh, no, I'm sorry, it was actually, it was Watertown squibbing the kicks. Belmont kept fumbling the ball, fell behind 20 to nothing, uh, like two minutes into the game and then held Watertown scoreless the rest of the way. I'm sure uh, former head coach Jan Kuman remembers that game quite well. Uh, in his uh, coaching career. We have a short run there on uh, first down for a pickup of about four yards. Speaking of other flashbacks, as I was reading the uh, capsule about this team, Ben, uh, they, they uh, run Lexington with Coach Shane Wilson, who's been uh, coaching uh, in Lexington and other places for close to three decades, is running uh, the wing T as we've got a handoff on second down. That's number 40, Sawyer Colwell, one of their senior captains who will uh, be short of the first down, probably by about four to five yards. It'll be third down coming up. Third down, and a, a long four upcoming for uh, the Lexington Minutemen looking to, uh, to uh, get a first down here. We said their quarterback is uh, Adam O'Shaughnessy. He's a junior. Wearing number eight. We might also see uh, another quarter. At this time, he's going to keep it himself. And he gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage for no gain. So the Marauders' defense holds impressively there. And uh, just like that. So Lexington actually with their first chance to, to string some offensive plays together. And they go three and out. will be forced to punt. Good defense from the Marauders, Ben. Lexington are off to a really rough start in the first quarter. We'll have the uh, punt upcoming here. I believe that's Austin Lassiter, number 20, back on the return for the Marauders. And I think that is uh, John Kafalis uh, getting ready to punt number six. Another junior. Lexington had a similar game to Belmont uh, last week because they too were trailing going into the fourth quarter. In fact, they were down as much as 24 to nothing in the first half. That kick was blocked partially, and that one is going to bounce and now roll, and uh, the Minutemen will down it as uh, Lassiter wisely stays away. Ball's going to be down at the 30-yard line, so Lexington gets a little bit of a roll 
uh, for themselves, and so it's not quite as disastrous, but the Marauders were definitely in there on the punt rush to uh, to get a piece of that uh, Kafalis punt. So Marauders will set themselves up first and 10 at their own 30. We still have 8.35 to go here in the opening quarter, and the Marauders lead 15 to nothing, looking for their second Middlesex League Liberty Division win in a row, and in as many weeks. Okay, I think we had a penalty on the, they called a penalty there? Right. There was holding on the Marauders. Well, that's a strange play. I'm wondering who is holding on a play like that where the punt was partially blocked and then uh, there was really no return. They just waited for the ball to roll. So I don't know who was holding who there, but unfortunately Marauders get backed up here. Where are they marking this? They're marking this at the 15 yard line? Wow. Boy, Lexington really got a big break here. Actually, I don't believe, you know what, were they down that ball? That's a 15 yard penalty. I don't think that was necessarily holding. I think that might've been a, I'm gonna guess that was probably more of a personal foul or something was going on that uh, I didn't see. Meanwhile, here comes an end around to Austin Lassiter, one of the senior captains. He turns the corner and uh, gets a nice pickup. He's close to a first down. He may actually have it. In fact, he does. They're moving the chains. So everything going right for the Belmont offense here so far. They've run four plays, and uh, two of them have been touchdowns, and they picked up a first down on the other one. <laughs> first and 10, Belmont on their own 26. as Jaden Arno is back in the shotgun. He's got Garung to his right. That time it's a bit of a bad snap and Jaden Arno is just gonna have to fall on it and Marauders will lose yardage on the play. Got the clock running here, uh, 7.43, 42 to go in the opening quarter. It'll be a loss of nine back to the Belmont 17, bring up a second down and 19. So here is Arno once again with Garung to his right. This time it's a clean snap, throw goes to the far side, it's incomplete. Arno was looking for Isaiah Arsvalone on the second down pass, and uh, it will be a third and long upcoming here. This might be the first opportunity, Ben, uh, with these two teams where the field position may end up flipping into Lexington's favor if the Marauders uh, can't get a first down or even pick up any yards on this uh, third down play that's upcoming. I, didn't, I don't think I ran down all the Belmont captains earlier, so uh, I will do it now. I, I, think I probably left out some. I mentioned Garung, Arno, Logan, and Lassiter. The other captains are uh, number 10, Bryce Hubbard, number 54, Ryan Halloran, who got a little banged up last game, but I believe he's back in there today. I'll maybe have to keep an eye out uh, for that number. Meanwhile, Arno looks to throw, finds Logan, and Logan will tiptoe along the near sideline. He's going to be a little short of the first down, but it's going to be close and if nothing else at least uh, Marauders are not pinned really deep on this fourth down play uh, where Lassiter will have to punt. It'll be fourth, fourth down and four. Ball is spotted at the 32 yard line. And it's actually number 12, Wyatt Sclafani, who we saw punting a couple of weeks ago in the Westford game. He is back to do, oh, I'm sorry, they're not punting. Marauder. Well, no, actually they are punting. It just kind of looks, it looks almost like a deep snap the way uh, Sclafani was going. But snap was high, but Sclafani's able to get the punt away. And that one will uh, not really take much of a bounce and roll. So Lexington's gonna come out of this with some pretty decent field position at their own 47 yard line as we've got 6.44 to go here in the opening quarter. And it is Belmont 15, Lexington nothing here on BHS Sports TV's coverage of Belmont Marauders varsity football. So 
So we'll see the Lexington offense once again, uh, still looking for their first first down of the game. Led by Adam O'Shaughnessy. One of the things I was going to say talking about throwbacks earlier is that uh, we mentioned Shane Wilson, longtime coach. We'll get to that in a minute. Meanwhile, oh, look at the Belmont defense pursuing. What a great play. Number one, Amari Mao is taken down for a big loss. And you can thank, uh, you can thank, uh, yeah, that was number 50, who of course naturally is not listed on the Belmont roster. Of course, we don't have a number 50 on our roster. Somebody's wearing a, it's Bryce Hubbard. Thank you very much. Bryce Hubbard, one of the, the captains. Uh, good shout out there. I don't know who said that, but thank you for the uh, assistance fan or coach or whoever might be uh, within earshot of my voice, which I know the way I yell is probably just about everybody in these stands. Anyway, we've got a second and 21 for O'Shaughnessy, and he's again being pursued this time by Hallway. O'Shaughnessy will turn the corner, not get much. He's not going to lose any yards, but he only gets probably about five yards back, so it's still going to be third and long for the Lexington offense. So, okay, so uh, Bryce Hubbard, one of the captains, one of the six Belmont captains. Uh, we have him down as a number 10, but he's actually wearing number 50 tonight. And uh, he really uh, had that great first down tackle for a loss that kind of put uh, Lexington into this hole. They're only gonna give O'Shaughnessy a gain of one on that play. So it's third and 18 here for Shane Wilson's Lexington Minutemen. Coach Wilson, who's uh, been coaching, uh, he was coaching 30 years ago uh, as an assistant. Loves to run. He's running the wing T. Now, meanwhile, we've got a, a sack. I can't even tell you about the wing T because the Belmont defense is in there so quickly. That is going to be a sack. Another loss. Lexington's going to have to punt. But, you know, when I was reading, Ben, about, the, uh, about Lexington's offense and what Wilson likes to run, he has his quarterback in the shotgun, and they run a more modernized version of what they call the wing T with two running backs flanked to each side. Well, I'll, you know, sadly, uh, just to tell you how long I've been calling games here, Ben, uh, I was here 30 years ago when former head coach Ed Mullen, uh, you know, uh, was running the wing T, and my guess is that Shane Wilson probably remembers because he was coaching 30 years ago. He probably remembers when Coach Mullen was running the wing T right here at Harris Field in Belmont, probably against uh, his Minutemen or wherever he was uh, coaching at the time. That punt's going to go uh, out of bounds on the far side. Marauders are going to start inside their own 40. So we still have uh, five minutes to go here in this opening quarter, and Marauders looking to add on to a 15 nothing lead. Your early, uh, well, your thoughts here on the uh, the early going, Ben? I think the Marauders are doing really well right now, and Lexington is trying, but they're off to a tough start. Yeah, I think that's definitely the case. Uh, yeah, I think you know part of that is the Marauders' defense, which is just swarming. And my guess is that you know some of what we saw even on that last team sack, there were like about three or four maroon jerseys surrounding uh, Adam O'Shaughnessy, the Lexington quarterback. That's probably uh, what the Marauders uh, did last week when, uh, as uh, Franklin Tucker put it, the entire defensive line of the Marauders or the entire defense uh, came in and sacked uh, the Winchester quarterback, helping the Marauders to get the ball back and uh, come from behind to win that ball game. Yeah, as we said, last week, both of these teams were trailing going into the fourth quarter. Both of these teams, Belmont and Lexington, scored 15 fourth quarter points to come from behind and win their Middlesex League uh, openers uh, as uh, Lexington came back at home against Arlington, who the Marauders will actually see next week. Uh, they will be playing the Spy Ponders out at their place. And as we said, Marauders coming back uh, with 15 points uh, last week in the fourth quarter to beat Winchester after being shut down for the first three quarters. Marauders really have a chance here in the early going to uh, get off to a strong start in the league, which could certainly help them uh, in terms of postseason play down the road. Here's a first down handoff to Adrian Garung, who breaks a couple of tackles, and he's in the open field again. First down, Marauders into Lexington territory at the 48-yard line, and it looks like it may be a huge night for the senior captain and running back, Adrian Garung. He's had a few of them before. <laughs> he's, uh <-huh. laughs> he's already got a 37-yard uh, touchdown run in this game, or 38-yard touchdown run. He scored Belmont's second touchdown. Had a touchdown last week, also uh, had a touchdown run a couple of weeks ago in the loss to Westford. We certainly know Garung uh, is doubly dangerous because he can shed tacklers, and then once he's in the open field, he just puts his speed to work, and he is hard to catch. 
Meanwhile, a little change of pace by the Marauders here. They're going to hand that ball off to uh, to number 33, uh, who's, of course, they don't have the roster immediately. There it is, uh, 33, uh, Jade uh, Chavez, or Chavot, and uh, the senior gets a couple of yards, second down. Once again, uh, four receivers, two split to each side. And Chauvet is to the left of quarterback Jaden Arno. We've got Austin Lasseter coming in motion. It's a fake handoff to Lasseter. And then in the slot, it's Brian Logan. And he is off to the races for another Marauder touchdown. 46 yards, Brian Logan's second touchdown of the first quarter, and the Marauders now lead 21-0. Still 327 left here in the opening frame. Unbelievable start by the Marauders here, Ben. Brian Logan's doing really well. I think Logan's only had the two catches, I believe, and he has scored two touchdowns on them. He had the 24-yard uh, TD reception, and then right there, 42 yards. Perfect slant pass by Arno, who faked it to Lassiter, and I think for a split second, the Lexington defense froze. They kind of fell for the, the fake handoff, and now Lassiter will kick the extra point, but there's flags down. So we'll wait and see what the infraction is. Current score is 21-0, Belmont is winning. And it is a false start, so we'll, uh, they're going to back the PAT up here. And they'll now, well, this will be a 25-yard PAT for Austin Lassiter. He's looking for his uh, second successful extra point in as many tries, and that is good. It is good. <laughs> so two for two for Austin Lassiter. Teams will come back upfield. Three minutes, 27 seconds to go here in the first quarter. It is now Belmont 22 and Lexington nothing. Certainly didn't expect the game to start off like this, Ben. This is just uh, unbelievable. And uh, strong start for the, uh, the Belmont Marauders. Offense for sure, they are clicking. They got huge holes, Lexington. Uh, we, you know, again, the, the preseason prognosticator said it might be a little bit of a down year for them. And uh, they come into the game at one and three, but you know, when they came from behind last week against Arlington, down 24, nothing in the second quarter, down 24 to 12 after three and won that game. You thought, okay, maybe we're gonna be in for a pretty good battle. These teams, traditionally longtime league rivals have always played hard fought games against each other. But Marauders off to a tremendous start here in the, uh, in the early going, 22 first quarter points. Brian Logan, two touchdown receptions on two catches from quarterback Jaden Arno. And then the 38-yard uh, touchdown run by Adrian Garung, sandwiched in between. Four possessions and three touchdowns, and again, another squib kick by Austin Lassiter. And apparently there will be no kicks deep from Lassiter tonight. He's just gonna keep squibbing it down the field. Ball taking some really funny bounces and I guess taking advantage of the fact that maybe some of these Lexington players don't have great hands. Hoping for recovery, but again, for the third consecutive time, Minutemen do recover the uh, squib kick. So they're gonna have this first in 10 at their own 29 yard line. Lexington, I believe, is still looking for their first first down here. Yeah, actually, that's the case. And uh, might have negative total yards to this point, thanks to the Marauder defense. There is a handoff, uh, number 40, Sawyer Colwell with the carry, and not much there. A minimal gain at best, and it looks like they're just spotting it right at the line of scrimmage. So we're going to call it second and 10. No gain for Colwell. Uh, he and number 10, John Donahue, are the two senior captains for the Minutemen, and uh, both are uh, running backs in the wing T style offense being employed by coach Shane Wilson. Although right now they're only kind of using one back and now they're kind of switching it up a little bit. Misdirection, they go to number 22, William Marson, 
And Marson's able to get a, a few more yards. He'll be short of the first down, but it's probably a gain of about, looks like at least five yards, maybe close to six. We're gonna bring down a third and we'll call it a long four. Clock running under two and a half minutes to go here in the opening quarter. Third and four for quarterback Adam O'Shaughnessy. He's going to throw one in the flat. The pass is caught out there. It's going to be a first down as there's a missed tackle. And Amari Mao is off to the races. And he has scored a Lexington touchdown. A missed tackle on a short pass in the flat. And I think the Marauders might have over-pursued to the other side. And it left a lot of open real estate for Amari Mao, number one, a sophomore running back. And that's going to go in the books as a 60-yard touchdown pass. Uh, really uh, a long run for Mao after he caught like a short pass in the flat. Lexington gets on the board with a minute 59 to go here in the opening quarter. It's now 22-6. to six. Your thoughts on that play, Ben? What did that you see? That was a really big breakaway. And he was really fast. Yeah, again, Mao very, uh, with Adrian Garung-like speed once he was in the open field. Snap and the kick is up and it's good. it's good. Yep, by number 33, Nathan D'Souza. So teams will come back upfield. 159 to go here in the first quarter. It is now 22 to seven in favor of Belmont. So I suppose this is a time I could pull out another flashback I was having because I thought this game was going to go exactly like uh, the, a game here between these two teams just six years ago. I have to bring this game up. I hate to pain the Marauder fans about this one, but as far as a sin single individual effort, Ben, I think perhaps I've never seen in any high school game I've ever called, covered, whatever, did I see Lexington quarterback Sal Freelich on here, right here at Harris Field six years ago. In that game, if you want to flash back to 2017 appropriately, well, maybe appropriate, I guess, from the Belmont point of view, the game was played here on Friday the 13th. It was <laughs> October 13th, 2017. Sal Freelich and the Lexington offense steamrolled the Marauders 56 to 14, putting up all 56 points in the first half. And in the first half, their offense possessed the ball for a total of three and a half minutes and scored eight touchdowns. Freelich in that game had two touchdown passes and he also had touchdown runs of 65, 30, 80, and 82 yards. And you know what he's doing six years later? Sal Freelich, I think, I think he's been in the news. Anyone follow Major League Baseball here? He happens to be an outfielder for the Milwaukee Brewers six years after pulling off that tremendous feat. I mean, what an athlete he is. Uh, and what a story. Rodgers will uh, run this kickoff back to the uh, just shy of the 40-yard line. Like I said, Ben, that's still one of the most amazing uh, individual efforts I've seen in a high school football game. I mean, the athleticism of Freelich, who just every time, I mean, again, Lexington's offense had the ball for three and a half minutes in the first half against Belmont and scored, scored eight touchdowns. And in fact, in the second half, Freelich came out of the game. And in fact, he took all the uh, Lexington coach at the time, took all the starters out of the game. That was just one of the strangest, but still uh, yeah, crazy game. Anyway, meanwhile, here's Adrian Garung. Marauders were off to that start. Garung uh, gets yardage, but there's a flag in the backfield, usually in the area of offensive holding. So I think uh, this run will come back. And in fact, it is holding on the Belmont offense. Let's see. Uh, uh, you know, I, ne I never plug the offensive line enough, and uh, I, you know, I, I feel like I should because uh, uh, Marauders certainly have done a, a good job here in the early going. Uh, I see Harrison Carlson in there. I see Bryce Hubbard, uh, 51 Enzo Passos, and I believe was, I think I saw 54 out there too, which is of course Captain Ryan Halloran. Actually, that looks like that's Halloran lined up at left tackle. So after the holding penalty, it's first and 20 for Belmont. At their own 30-yard line, Garung goes in motion. He'll catch the pass in the flat and maybe try to pull an Amari Mao. Yeah, we have two number one running backs here who both have great breakaway speed. Uh, that time, the Lexington defense is there to tackle Garung for a relatively short gain. Gain of three and bring up second and 17. Yeah, as I was saying, Ben, that you know, I was 
you know, the way the Marauders started this game, scoring two touchdowns in the opening minute, I was having flashbacks to the game here six years ago between these two teams when Sal Freelick, I, I believe, also did the same thing. I think Lexington's, uh, I think they scored not only, they didn't have the ball very long, but I think two of those touchdowns came in like the first couple of minutes of the, uh, of the uh, opening quarter. Got second down, 17, and Jaden Arno in the shotgun. He's throwing it. He is back to throw, looking. Nice spiral downfield, and that's going to be incomplete. He was looking for Austin Lasseter. Double coverage by the Minutemen. And uh, the pass might have been a little bit underthrown to boot. So it's going to bring up third and 17. I guess uh, Jaden wanted to take a shot. Of course, Jaden Arno could beat you two ways, as we all know, Ben. And we saw that a couple of weeks ago uh, in the Westford game, even though the Marauders didn't win that game. Arno, uh, you know, put together some nice drives, not just with his passing, but also running the football, which is a, a great dual threat to have from a quarterback. Yep. We're in the uh, final 30 seconds here of the first quarter. And once again, Arno in the shotgun. Four receivers, two splits to each side. And it looked like there was a little bit of movement, but I don't see a flag. There's a uh, pass down the far side. That's Logan. Logan's got first the first down. down. Yes. Logan was right at the first down marker. He made a nice little spin move there, Ben, to, uh, to elude the tackler and pick up the necessary yardage so that the Marauders could move the chains and pick up the first down. That's going to be the final play of this first quarter as the clock is running. And uh, so uh, don't, don't keep those chains where they are there, Chain Gang. You're going to have to pick them up and switch them around anyway. Um, but they won't have to go far since the ball is near midfield. Uh, we've reached the end of the first quarter here at Harris Field. It's been pretty much all Belmont so far as they lead 22-7 to here on BHS Sports TV. We do uh, thank you for uh, checking out our live stream tonight on uh, belmontmedia.org slash public TV. You can also, if you're also watching us here uh, locally on Comcast Channel 9 or Verizon Channel 29, we welcome you to BHS Sports TV's broadcast of uh, and coverage of Marauder football. I'm Todd Bloniars, alongside uh, Ben Chelnitsky, Belmont uh, High School freshman class of, what, 27, right? Am I yep. Good? Okay. And a friend of uh, Aaron Parnagian, right? You and Aaron was here a couple of weeks ago yeah. uh, helping out on the broadcast. So, uh. I think I was asking you off camera, Ben. You, so you, you uh, participate in sports uh, for, you're going to be, or you will be participating in sports as a freshman at Belmont High. What are you going to be? Uh? I'm going to try out for track in the winter and spring. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Uh. Yeah, quite a difference, I guess, between the two, right? I mean, what do you prefer? Do you prefer running indoors on the indoor track or in the spring running outdoors? I guess it depends on the weather outside, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So ready to start quarter number two. Marauders have the ball on the Lexington 49-yard line after uh, the uh, Ben Logan uh, reception on third down. It's a fake, and a handoff uh, goes to Austin Lassiter. And Lassiter will go to the far side and uh, pick up about five or six yards on that end around run. I would have called that a Statue of Liberty play, Ben, but uh, normally the quarterback would put the ball behind himself and the running back would come from behind to take the ball, which did not happen there. I suppose you need, we need to watch those plays more carefully when the running back cuts in front of the quarterback because depending how the quarterback drops out the ball or hands it off to him, it could be construed as a pass because if the, the running back's going by and the quarterback drops it like this, you know, he just extends his hand, drops it, I think that's considered a pass as opposed to, well, because it has to be a pass because he's, you know, he's, uh, the ball's going forward. So I guess, I guess, I guess that, uh, yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> Here's a handoff. That's Garung, I believe, uh, again. Garung's close to the first down marker. Down around the Belmont uh, 40. Oh, they're going to they're gonna have to respot that at the 39, I think, because, yeah, there they are. Yeah, I was going to say, Belmont started at the 49, so they had to get to the 39 for a first. If you're going to move the chains, let's uh, make sure the ball's in the right location. So Jaden Arno with an impressive first quarter. 
Two touchdown passes to his uh, fellow senior co-captain, Brian Logan. And then we also had a 38-yard uh, uh, touchdown run from senior co-captain Adrian Garung. Garung's going to take, nope, not, no, it's a fake to Garung, and it goes in the flat to Ars Villan. Uh Villain uh, will get to close to first down yardage. Legendary Belmont uh, public address announcer Al Gledhill likes to say Ars Villon. He likes to give that little extra <laughs> French touch to the uh, name, which is, of course, a French name. Maybe I should start doing it. Villon, Ars Villon. Uh, there the, he is also a senior. Versatile part of Coach McRae's uh, team. They have him listed on the Belmont roster with a position of ATH, which I guess means athlete which he is very athletic and uh, can play a lot of positions. Uh, wherever Coach uh, McRae needs him, he's, he's able to plug Ars Valone in there. We, we certainly, we've seen Valone on return teams, uh, special teams, and you know, catching, uh, catching that pass there. This time, Garung will take the handoff. He'll run left, looking for a little bit of room there. Time, uh, that time, a little bit of pursuit from the Lexington defense, and they push him out of bounds. So... Uh, But it will be close to first down yardage, I believe. They're gonna now they're now they're gonna back it up. It looks like the run's gonna be a yard short. Third down and one at the 30 for Belmont, leading here 22 to seven, with nine minutes to go in the first half. Coach Brian McRae, we mentioned. Uh, Looking to go to 3-0 and against uh, Lexington. This is a matchup uh, he seems to like and uh, has been advantageous for him so far in his uh, coaching career here at Belmont in his third season. Coming into the game with a record of 10-14 and overall. And that includes the 2-2 two and two this year. Here is uh, Arno's going to keep that himself as the snap was low. And it looks like Arno's got the first, first down. down. Yeah, he didn't need a whole lot there. It was third and one. And he managed to uh, skirt his way between the tacklers and pick up the first for the Marauders. It is a, a beautiful Friday evening here in Belmont. A little, uh, almost unseasonably warm. Temperatures uh, in the 60s, which isn't bad for the first week of October. Uh, ball is at the 28-yard line of Lexington. First and 10 for quarterback Jaden Arno and Garung is to his left, and uh, once again, two receivers split to each side. We like to keep our eye on Brian Logan. He's uh, here to the near side. And uh, up the middle, it's a, it's a draw to Garung, and what a hole. Nice job by the offensive line creating that hole for Garung, who picks up another Belmont first down. About 15 yards on that run for Adrian Garung. Very talented Belmont running back who's put up some impressive numbers in his career here at Belmont and uh, deservedly a senior captain this year. He's probably going to finish, uh, I would say in his career, he's probably going to finish somewhere maybe over 2,000 yards at least, right? I mean, he's just uh, a lot of big runs. That time, uh, some problems on the snap and uh, Arno was able to get it to Garung on the handoff, and Garung's still able to get some positive yardage out of that. Uh, that was another low snap. We've had it, we've seen that a few times here already, Ben. Some low snaps coming from center, and that time that one kind of one-hopped Arno, who was able to hold on to it, and then as he was stumbling uh, to try to, you know, hang out of the football, he handed it off, and Garung, well, actually, as it turns out, Garung did not get any uh, yardage. He actually lost a little. Uh, Might have lost a yard where they've got the uh, marker spotted, although up on the scoreboard it's saying second and 10. Rodgers have so far taken advantage of two Lexington turnovers, which happened uh, within the first minute of this ball game and uh, converted them both into touchdowns. Now, Coach McRae would like to take a timeout, and that'll come with 6.21 to go here in the first half. And the Marauders uh, with the momentum on their side, and Coach McRae wants to make sure that uh, they keep it. And so uh, leading by two touchdowns here.
impressive stats from Agent Garong. He already has over 80 yards. Oh, 80 nice. Okay. Yards. Oh, you've been you've been keeping track of his uh, yard, his runs here. Okay. Nice job. Well, thanks, Ben. Okay. So 80 yards rushing already. So a pretty good chance he's going to probably have 100 yards by halftime, I would think. And uh, yeah, on his way to another one of those 200-yard games, which he's had a few of in his career. And in fact, um, uh, let me see. Last year at Lexington, Garung finished uh, with 202 rushing yards on 20 carries and scored three touchdowns against these Minutemen. Had touchdown runs of uh, 45, 5, and 3 yards and even added a two-point score. Uh, to his credit, so a total of 20 points scored by Garung, 20 of the 35 Marauder points, and Marauders winning that game last year uh, just to our north, uh, up, up the road, uh, up Route 60, uh, by a score of 35 to 20. Now, my, my, my geography's way off on that. <laughs> Lexington mm -hmm. High School's not up Route 60. That'll be Arlington High School. That's where the Marauders are going to be next week when they head up Route 60 to take on their crosstown rivals, uh, the Spy Ponders of Arlington High School. Lexington just a little bit to the northwest of uh, Belmont. Here's a pass, Arno. Logan again, his fourth catch. And Logan close to the first down, a flag thrown in late. It came from the defensive backfield. So we'll wait and see what the call is here. Clock stops at 6.12 remaining here in the first half. I was holding on the Marauders. So, second and 10 is gonna become second and longer. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, that was not holding. It was a uh, blindside block. Thank you, Al Gledhill. I didn't see the blindside block, so let's... And apparently I uh, didn't see the correct call from the official either. So second and 17 after they march off the penalty yardage. Here's Arno, and he's going to call his own number up the middle. Quarterback draw. He'll get back almost all of the, uh, the penalty yards, or maybe about half the penalty yards. I guess it's going to be third and 15. They're, they're spotting the ball at the Belmont 20. And the first down marker is at the five. Third down and 15 for Belmont. We have not seen the Marauders attempt a field goal this year, so I'll be curious to see what Coach McRae decides to do if the Marauders do not uh, pick up uh, the first down on this third and long play. I'm not even sure if Lassiter has attempted a field goal. He did have to make a 25-yard extra point a little bit earlier, uh, kicking in the other direction here. The Marauders going left to right as you're watching us in the second quarter. Lassiter goes in motion. Line up to the far side, and... Running to the near side is Arno. He'll keep it. Nice hole, nice blocking, and he will be close to the first down marker. Jaden Arno, some strong running and some really good blocking by the O-line, too. I see Captain uh, co-captain Ryan Halloran uh, pulled all the way over, uh, pulling tackle from the left all the way to the right side, and in fact, uh, Arno's going to be marked just about a yard short of the first down. So given this fourth down and short play, Ben, what would you uh, what would you think? There, what, what do you want to see the Marauders? Do you want to see them go for it here? Actually, I guess they're. <laughs> I guess uh, we're having our mind made up for us here. Is uh, Marauders are going to go for it? It's fourth down and a long one, almost two yards. Garung is flanked to the right of Arno. So we're under four minutes to go, first half, and Marauders leading 22-7. Fourth down run, it will be Arno again. He turns the corner, he's got the first down. He's inside the five yard line. Great fake handoff to Garung that time. And obviously if you're Lexington there, Ben, you have to concentrate on Adrian Garung. And yeah, Arno they're not move. expecting it. 
So it's first and goal for the Marauders at the Lexington four-yard line. Looking to add on to this 15-point lead. The Marauders offense just clicking in all directions right now. In fact, number four, Brian Logan, I know this right now is currently on the sideline. I don't know if he's either hurt or just taking a couple of plays off. I mean, the way the Marauder offense is moving, they may not need him in this instance. Hand off Garung. Adrian Garung gets his second touchdown of the night for the Marauders as they extend their lead. It's now 28 to seven with 3.12 to go here in the first half. Adrian Garung with his second TD of the evening and his fifth touchdown against Lexington in the last two years. Adrian Garung has been a thorn in the side of the Minutemen, of course. He's been a thorn in the side of many Middlesex League and even non-league opponents. And as you mentioned earlier, uh, Ben, he's already got close to 100 yards rushing in this first half. Lassiter's kick is up it's and good. good. Yeah. Austin Lassiter's got that, uh, that PAT, that great kicking style. It's a nice line drive solidly between the uprights. And so the teams will come back upfield with 3.12 to go here in the first half. It is now Belmont 29, Lexington 7. Two touchdown passes from Jaden Arno to Brian Logan and two touchdown runs by Adrian Garung. All three of those players that I just named senior captains and uh, doing their part on a very senior-laden team. And it's really that experience that's paying off tonight for the Marauders, Ben. <laughs> Coming up at halftime, uh, we'll have the Marauder band uh, doing their part. And I believe, uh, I don't see Jeremy currently. Uh, I, he'll, I think Jeremy's still on camera tonight. Uh, I think, I think during the uh, last uh, game we did against Westford, uh, Jeremy kept the live stream going so everyone could uh, watch and hear the excellent Belmont High School Marching Band. You know anybody in the band, Ben? No. No? Okay. Unfortunately not. <laughs> you never played an instrument yourself? I didn't either, so. No. I probably could have played the tuba because I, I do have a, off, I, I blow a lot of hot airs, so, so I'm told anyway. Uh, Brendan Schwartz is going to uh, field that cleanly for Lexington, and so the Minutemen will have the ball first and 10 at their own 38-yard uh, line. We've got 3.10 to go here until halftime. Are we going to have the uh, sound up uh, during the half, Jeremy, so we can hear the band? That is the goal, and Jeremy just said, yes, sir -y. Jeremy Meserve uh, running our camera tonight and uh, basically uh, just is in charge of everything involving BHS Sports TV. All the high school coverage you see here on the uh, BMC channels, Jeremy is responsible for making it happen. Here is a, a first down handoff for Flat positive down. yards. And then, yeah, as it's, it's, it's been that night for Lexington, hasn't it, Ben? Yeah. Yeah, they get five yards on a first down run, which might be their best first down play of the evening so far, and it's going to come back. Ball, uh, flag was thrown in the backfield. I think we all know that's offensive holding. Oh, but, oh actually, no. Hey, once again. <laughs> When Todd assumes he, well, you know how the rest of that line goes. It's going to be a personal foul face mask on the run. So tack 15 yards onto the end of this. It's going to be a first down for Lexington, which I believe is their first first down. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's not, of course, it's not their first first down. They have a touchdown. <laughs> Although I think if you take away the touchdown run, I'm not sure Lexington has gotten a first down where they haven't scored. Like, like a, actually just kind of move the chain sort of first down as opposed to get on the scoreboard first down, I, I guess. First and 10 at the 38-yard line of Belmont. And here's the, uh, the handoff running through a crowd of uh, Marauder defenders. And uh, I think that was, I think that was 23. Yeah, Christian Flores, he is a, a sophomore running back. Shane Wilson in this uh, wing T uh, formation employs a lot of different running backs. Uh, he's got the uh, the two captains, of course, uh, John Donahue and uh, Sawyer Colwell. Well, we haven't seen Donahue's number called. We got flags flying all over the place on that play. Probably a false start or a delay of game because they threw the flags as soon as the ball was snapped. Let's see if Todd can get this one right. And let's also stop talking about me in the third person. That would probably not be uh, a wise thing to do. Here is the, uh, yeah, they're going to 
march that. Oh, and it's, well, see him again. <laughs> I think next time there's a flag, uh, either I'll let you call it, Ben, or uh, I'll just wait for the officials <laughs> to make the, the call. So that's, an, that's a five-yard penalty against Belmont for offsides. They threw that one immediately at the snap of the ball, which is why Lexington snapped it, which was the smart thing to do. It's going to be second and one, Lexington. Handoff, and that should be enough for a minute man first down. Yeah, that's Flores again. The Minutemen are getting dangerously close to the Marauders end zone. Yeah, well, it's outside of the, the one long touchdown uh, catch and run by Amari uh, Mao. That's, uh, yeah, we actually, really, if you talk about this territory of the field, Ben, uh, they've, Lexington's been in it for like about three seconds if you count Mao's run. He was getting downfield so quickly. Another tackle for loss by the Marauders. Ryan Halloran with the tackle. Yeah. It's good to have Ryan Halloran back. He was a little bit banged up a couple of weeks ago against Westford, but he is a, is a senior captain, big part of the offensive and defensive lines for the Marauders. Uh, provides just a lot of great senior leadership out there. So uh, it's a loss of one after Halloran makes the tackle for the TFL, as it were. Anyway, second and 11. Another handoff, and I think that's Flores again. Uh, And uh, he'll squeeze his way up to about the, uh, or down to about the 25, bring up third down. Yeah, it's been all uh, Christian Flores running the ball on this uh, particular drive for the Minutemen. Under a minute left in the second quarter. Yeah, clock is running. Uh, Lexington it needs to be a little cognizant of that. Third and five. Here is uh, O'Shaughnessy, and he's going to get tackled. That is a sack, that's that's 55, Alexander Hoffman. Close friends call him Alex, I'm guessing, I don't know, I don't, I don't think his friends call him Alexander, but that is how he's listed on the Marauder roster. Does a nice job there taking down Adam Shaughnessy for the uh, sack. Fourth down, clock continues to run, only 15 seconds left. I, does Shane Wilson, is he aware that, does he wanna stop the clock here? The clock is running. I'm not sure if that's the official time remaining, but they better hurry and snap this ball. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. Shane Wilson now recognizes the fact that the clock is running. Well, as I guess he just wanted to bring it down to one play and make sure the Marauders weren't going to get the ball back as it's fourth down. So I guess now from the 30-yard line, Ben, I, I guess Lexington's going to take a shot at the end zone, unless they have a really good field goal kicker, uh, which would be uh, D'Souza. We saw him earlier on the extra point. I don't know. I don't know if he's got uh, range from 47 yards. That sounds more like Kieran Core territory, and uh, Core, the uh, excellent uh, kicker for the uh, Winchester Red and Black, as he uh, kicked a, a 45-yarder last week in that uh, game against Belmont. In fact, he was honored before the game as he's uh, uh, participating in some national kicking camps. Uh, we've seen him kick uh, some long field goals. Actually, uh, last year when Winchester was here, I believe Core had a chance to win the game for uh, Winchester and missed a, a long field goal, but not by much. He had distance. Uh, it was, I think, close to a 50-yard attempt. Anyway, here we go. Final play of the first half. Fourth down. Ball at the 30-yard line. O'Shaughnessy, the Lexington quarterback. And here we go. He's going to toss it over the middle in the flat, and all the Marauders have to do is make a tackle, which they do. I am not sure. Was there supposed to be some laterals there or something? Uh, you'd feel like uh, they wanted to do something at the end of that play. That was tight end William Everett on the reception. But uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem like the greatest play to call. Anyway, we've reached halftime here at Harris Field. And your score. If you're a Marauders fan, you are enjoying this tremendously here at Harris Field. It is Belmont 29, Lexington 7. We'll step aside. You'll get to hear uh, the Belmont High School Marching Band, and we'll be back with second half action here on BHS Sports TV. We welcome you back to Harris Field here at Belmont High School in Belmont, Massachusetts, uh, after we were just regaled by uh, the wonderful uh, tunes from the, the best band in the land, as Al Gledhill called them. Uh, and they certainly are the Belmont High School Marching Band, uh, giving us a great medley of old-time songs that old-timers like me recognize and enjoy and appreciate. Heard a little Chicago, the Eagles, and uh, even some Weezer. Uh, getting uh, down in Beverly Hills there, uh, one of their uh, 
you, you know they kind of run the gamut when you can go from Chicago to Weezer. But uh, if anyone can do it, it's the Belmont High School Marching Band. They are very talented. Uh, we do welcome you back here. Also talented uh, here this evening. And uh, so far in this season, the uh, Belmont Marauders football team, we are having a lot of fun here on Friday Night Lights. Uh, Todd Bloniar is alongside Ben Chilnitsky. And uh, Marauders up 29-7, uh, doing just about everything right in that first half. Uh, you want to... Recap your thoughts from that first half, Ben, uh, what, what you liked and saw. That was an action-packed first half. Jaden Arna threw for two touchdowns, and Adrian Garong got two touchdowns, and Brian Logan got two touchdowns. Yeah, uh, Logan catching the two touchdowns from uh, quarterback uh, Jaden Arno, and then uh, we had the two touchdown runs uh, by Garung. Uh, who you said, I guess, has close to 100 yards already uh, here in, in the first half after he ran for 202 yards against these Lexington Minutemen last year. Marauders uh, really, I think, uh, were able to get the jump on this game. Two early Lexington turnovers it was also a big difference maker in this game, Ben, as uh, Lexington was supposed to receive the opening kickoff. They, they fumbled the opening kickoff. Belmont got, a, uh, got the ball, recovered the fumble, Two plays later, they're in the end zone, and then after a, a nice interception by uh, Casey Regan, uh, Marauders scored again. They, they actually scored 15 points within the first minute of this ball game, and now uh, are going to get the ball to start third quarter, and that ball's going to be squibbed down, and now Lexington's going to try to take a play out of the Belmont playbook, squibbing the kicks and maybe hoping for a bad bounce or a crazy bounce of the ball, and maybe it bounces off of uh, one of the return men, but uh, Marauders did recover that. I believe that was... Uh, I think that was 14 Andre Chavushian uh, in there uh, with the uh, with the return. So Marauders are going to start this drive on their own 42-yard line, first and 10 here in the third quarter, and already leading 29-7, looking to win their second Middlesex League Liberty Division game in as many weeks. It is once again Arno in the shotgun. And he'll hand it off to Adrian Garung on first down. Garung again spinning, and he eluded to the first line of defense, but not the second. Lexington's in there to take him down for a gain of about two. I mean, the thing about Garung, though, is he, he's, he's a big kid. He's, he's well built for a you know, running back and everything. He has the ability to kind of wear down defenses too. And so, you know, you might be able to stop him a few times. He gets a two or a three yard run. You think, oh, we got him. And then he just kind of keeps driving and eventually he wears down that defense and he will break one off as uh, certainly he did even in that first quarter when he uh, got the 42 yard run to get things started. And, you know, he said, then last year we mentioned he scored three touchdowns against these Lexington Minutemen and uh, one of those was a 45 yard run. You just never know when he might break one. A little bit of a high snap there. Pass in the flat is incomplete. Intended for Brian Logan. And it will be third down. Been a few issues with the snaps tonight uh, for the Marauders. I'm trying to see if I can get a closer look here. Is, uh, Trying to employ my binoculars, uh, which I did not have last uh, last time we were here. It is uh, the senior captain, Bryce Hubbard, who's uh, at center. I actually saw Alex Hoffman doing a little snapping practice uh, just before uh, this third quarter started, but that might also be special teams. Here's Garung in the flat. He'll, he'll get a first, first down. down. Yeah, into... Uh, into Lexington territory. Garung with the catch and run, which again, this is, that's what he is also good at. He can take a short pass play by from Jaden Arno and, and turn it into big yards. Uh, Lexington's only score in that first half came on a similar type play, a pass in the flat from quarterback Adam O'Shaughnessy to sophomore running back Amari Mau broke uh, a uh, turn to pass in the flat to a 60 yard touchdown for the Minutemen's only points. So first and 10, handoff, and Marauders will uh, change it up once again as it's uh, 33, uh, Jedya Chave. Chave's got another first down for the Marauders. An emphatic first down call there by Al Gledhill. Marauders with the ball 
at the 43-yard line of Lexington. As we're two minutes in to the second half, the Riders this time have three receivers split here to the near side. Handoff goes once again to Chauvet, and he will uh, pick up another seven or eight yards. He's gang tackled there by uh, several minute men that include uh, number 90, Christian Brown, number 11, Nigel, and Twatwa. The Marauders are slowly but surely picking up yards and advancing alongside Lexington's half. Yeah, there's uh, certainly are, Ben, and that's uh, gonna have second down and uh, a long two or a short three coming up here. Once again, it's Logan split here to the near side with Lassiter in the near side slot. Again, handoff goes to Chauvet, who kind of juggles it a little bit, but holds on, runs up the middle, gets another Belmont first down. Flag thrown. And we have a flag on the field. And uh, that's a quick call from the official holding on the offense. Marauders have uh, picked up the majority of the penalties tonight. Really hasn't uh, hurt them to this point as they lead by 22 early in the third quarter. But you can uh, forget about that first down run by Chauvet. That will not count, and they will uh, march this one back. There was a reason there was a nice hole there for uh, Chauvet to run through. <laughs> somebody, uh, somebody was holding. Second and 13, ball spot at the Lexington 46-yard line as Adrian Garung checks back into the game and he is to the right of Arno. Arno will fake it this time to Garung. He'll uh, keep it himself and get to about the 40 yard line. Gain of a, about uh, six, I believe, or? Yes, gain of six, uh, we'll call it a second down, about eight to go. A reminder, we've got uh, two more home games in the regular season for the Marauders, both against Middlesex League Liberty Division opponents. Two weeks uh, from tonight, the Woburn Tanners, who along with Belmont and Lexington are the only teams that are undefeated in league play so far. As we've got third and eight here for the Marauders. And again, Arno's gonna keep this one himself. He's gonna run right and He's going to be a little short of the first down. Some decent blocking there on the uh, the right side. Uh, Enzo Passos among uh, a few marauders over there. We've got a fourth down and uh, we'll call it a long three. Belmont has to get uh, inside of Lexington's 34, probably to almost the 33 for a first down. And it looks like the Marauders are going to treat this as four down territory. It's kind of that spot in the field where it might be worth the gamble, right? Even if you don't make it, uh, you're, you're already in Lexington territory, right, Ben? Yeah. Marauders haven't had too many fourth down uh, opportunities. They did convert one deep in, uh, in goal to go situations earlier. Long pass downfield oh. off the hands of Austin Lassiter, who had a touchdown. He had beat the defense and was all alone, and the ball just a little overthrown by Arno, and Lassiter just couldn't quite catch up to it. Got his hands on it, but a little bit out of his reach, and so the Marauders are gonna turn this over on downs. Lexington will start at their own 36 yard line. 6.56 to go here in the third quarter. Here's quarterback Adam O'Shaughnessy in the shotgun and a quick, uh, it's almost like a direct snap because uh, number 40, um, uh, Sawyer Colwell, one of their uh, senior captains, uh, he cuts in front of O'Shaughnessy just as the ball's being snapped and almost looks like it's a, it's a direct snap right, which is kind of what the wing tee is about sometimes. It doesn't always go right to the quarterback. The running backs kind of will cut in motion and sometimes take the uh, snap in front of the quarterback, which is what happened there. Gain on the play. 
zero. Marauders defense <laughs> snuffed that play out effectively. So second and 10. And this time O'Shaughnessy goes far side, passes complete over there. That's Mao again, who had the 60 yard touchdown run earlier. But this time he runs into Ryan Halloran, who will make the tackle, although Mao does pick up a first down. And actually, Mao is uh, still down over there on the far side. He's slow to get up. And we couldn't see what happened at the end of that play. But that time there was no open field for Mao, who did have a 60-yard uh, catch and run in the first half. This time Halloran there to make the stop. Yeah, as we mentioned, Marauders will be uh, home to take on the Woburn Tanners in two weeks. We'll have that game for you here on BHS Sports TV. And then three weeks from tonight, it'll be a senior night, and the Marauders will be hosting the Reading High School Rockets, who, kind of like this Lexington team, may not be the Reading... Rockets that you remember if you are a fan of uh, high school football going back as far as long as I've been calling uh, some games here over the years. Um, Reading traditionally has been uh, considered a powerhouse in the Middlesex League, but they're kind of on a bit of a down stretch too. So uh, when you when you factor in that game, you factor in what the Marauders are doing tonight, Ben, and the fact that next week they go to Arlington to play a team that blew a 24-0 lead to these Lexington Minutemen last week, all of a sudden you're thinking Marauders could probably win four of their five league games, uh, perhaps, right? Yeah, I agree. I mean, the one tough game will certainly be Woburn, who looks to be kind of the, the class of the league, but um, it was interesting. I was looking at the Boston Globe uh, you know, top 20 rankings for uh, Eastern Mass High School football. There weren't any Middlesex League teams at all uh, that were even in the top 20, and that's kind of uh, strange to see. Usually you see at least one or two uh, find their way in there. There's a uh, flag th thrown. Yeah, there was a flag in the backfield. That's probably, uh, I say probably, <laughs> watch out there. Uh, I say that should be holding. That's usually in the area of holding, but it seems like all the Belmont, <laughs> all the penalties have been on Belmont tonight. Although this time, I think this is going to be on Lexington because I see, uh, I think that was Shane Wilson, their coach over there, talking with the official. And in fact, uh, I'm not sure that was holding. I think that was an illegal, I think it was a, either a legal substitution or a legal shift. Of course, when you're running on the wing team, you've got like running backs cutting in motion a lot, Ben. I think that illegal shift thing is something you do have to be careful uh, about. Uh, there are certain times you, you can't be uh, moving necessarily. So all of a sudden it's first and 15, a handoff going and whoa, another great what tackle. What a great tackle. Yeah. That was, uh, I believe that was number 50. I think that was number 50. Yeah, that was Hubbard. Bryce Hubbard, yeah. Bryce Hubbard, who we now know is wearing number 50. He's limping a little bit there, walking gingerly back to the defensive side, but he made a nice tackle there to uh, stop that for no gain. Second down and, uh, well, actually a loss, actually. So it's second and 18 now for Lexington. They have to actually get inside the Belmont 40 to get a first down. So here's O'Shaughnessy, uh, and he'll keep it himself this time, running right. And great pursuit that time by number 77, Harrison Carlson. The big defensive tackle just kept chasing O'Shaughnessy down, was able to pull him down from behind for a gain of maybe about five yards, but still it's going to bring up a third and uh, about 12 or 13, third and long here for the Minutemen again, who've been kind of in this spot pretty much all night. Adrian Garung actually making a uh, checking in defensively. Uh, he's listed on the roster not just as a running back for the Marauders, but also a defensive back. Marauders uh, with, with a bit of a small roster, only 31 players uh, on varsity, so a lot of these guys uh, do end up uh, playing both sides of the ball, offense and defense. And now head coach uh, Shane Wilson of the Lexington Minden Men is going to take a timeout with 4.09 to go here in the third quarter and facing a third and 12 for his offense. And uh, it's 
been all Marauders tonight, Ben. It's been a fun night here at uh, Harris Field. Marauders, uh, you know, trying to win their second straight Middlesex League uh, uh, Liberty Division game, and uh, look like they're well on their way the way things are going tonight. Yeah, the Marauders' defense has been really good. Doing well, jamming up the Lexington offense. He's Ben Cholnitsky. I'm Todd Bloniars, and we've got our cameraman uh, and uh, BHS Sports TV executive producer Jeremy Meserve uh, here tonight on a, just a beautiful Friday evening. And as we said, Marauders have uh, just looked good tonight from the get-go, taking advantage of two early Lexington turnovers. It led to 15 quick points in the first minute of play, and Marauders have not looked back since currently leading 29-7 and still uh, still a whole quarter plus four minutes to go here. And uh, let's see what uh, Shane Wilson uh, gave as the play call. It's, uh, it's O'Shaughnessy, he's looking, he's fighting, and boy, the Marauders are just, they're winning this game at the line of scrimmage, Ben. They're, they're just getting, they're beating the Minutemen to the ball. That was 54, Ryan Halloran again in there. And so it's going to be fourth down. I mean, it's fourth and long here, Ben. I, I mean, I don't know. What do you what do you do in the spot? You're, you're trailing by three touchdowns. It's fourth and long. You're at midfield. Still a lot of time left, but you need to keep the ball on offense. And you, here you are punting. I mean, I know it's hard because right, it's fourth and long. I mean, yeah. you know, but it's. Uh, Kind of a tough spot to be in. Meanwhile, I believe that's Austin Lassiter who's uh, standing back uh, around his uh, 20. He's going to let this one uh, roll. Bounce away. Now he picks it up. He's going to try to outrun some of the return men. He might be able to do oh. it. Austin Lassiter. There's a flag down. I think we're going to have a, uh, yeah, I think right there on that last turn, there might have been an illegal block. And uh, that's right in that area on the return. And so uh, what looked like a big return for Austin Lassiter, one of the uh, senior captains, is going to be uh, coming back. It looked like Lassiter was going to just let that one roll and roll, and then at the last minute, he, I think he picked it up because he probably felt, you know, hey, I can, he saw probably some daylight on this side of the field. What did you think? I mean, yeah, he just ran for over 30 yards. Yeah, unfortunately, it will not count, though. They're going to be uh, marking off the penalty yardage here. So Belmont will start this drive at their 30-yard line. Uh, so we've got 3.07 to go here in the third quarter. So senior quarterback Jaden Arno back in his normal shotgun position with Adrian Garung to his left. And four receivers for Belmont. Handoff Garung on first down. Garung will get about four or five. He will get gang tackled there by a swarm of Minutemen. Much like it was back in uh, 1776, right? <laughs> swarm of Minutemen. <laughs> uh, we were rooting for him then. I'm not so sure we're rooting for him quite as hard uh, 200, almost 250 years later. Uh, that uh, will be a gain of about six for Adrian Garung in the second down upcoming here at the 37. This time Garung will be to Arno's right. I mean, when the Marauders spread out the offense like this, there's just so many options that uh, Arno has. He's going to hand it off to Garung this time. Garung close to first down yardage. Let's see where they spot it. Yeah, they're moving the chains. He's got another first down. I mean, that for sure puts him over 100 yards, I would say, Ben. Yeah, he might be around 150 by now. Wow, okay. And uh, he'll check out right now uh, on that play. Uh, I think we'll probably end up seeing number 33, Jay Gashave again. And in fact, that is exactly who we see to Arno's right. In the spread with the uh, two receivers split each side, handoff Chave. Chave with a nice hole up the middle. And again, uh, kudos to the O-line of the Marauders. 
Number 78, Zach Zadam. I haven't mentioned his name tonight, but he's part of that old line. And so we will mention him. We'll also mention, of course, Harrison Carlson. Rather imposing on that uh, front. Of course, the center, Bryce Hubbard, checking in right now. Number 51, Enzo Passos. As, uh, Coach McCray does a little bit of substituting on that O-line. Of course, Ryan Halloran at the left tackle spot. And I think with that, we gave you all of the offensive linemen. They, they don't get their names mentioned enough, but I, I think tonight they are really helping to control the line of scrimmage for the Marauders, especially because a lot of them also play on defense on that line. Arno's going to keep this, but... Uh, Ends up getting sacked. Yeah, not much happening there. That time, uh, 42, uh, Thomas Higgins, and 84, William Everett take him down for a, uh, for a loss, and suddenly it's... Uh, Third and three. Clock running here, final uh, 30 seconds of the third quarter. We'll see if the Marauders actually plan to run this play. There's no reason they have to, however, up 29-7. Uh, and what's been a scoreless third quarter? We've uh, This was our score at halftime, and it looks like it's going to be our score at the end of three. And, in fact, the Marauders are just going to go to a huddle, and the final seconds of this third quarter will tick down. And uh, so once again, the officials and the chain gang get a big break because the clock and the quarter end with the ball right near midfield. So <laughs> they only got to move it a couple of yards to the other side. We reached the end of three quarters, 36 minutes in the books here at Harris Field. Friday night lights, and it's been all fun for the Marauders as they lead 29-7 over the Lexington Minutemen. We do thank you once again for joining us here on BHS Sports TV's coverage. Uh, whether you are watching us uh, on uh, Comcast Channel 9 or... Verizon Channel 29 here in Belmont or at belmontmedia.org slash public TV for the live stream, which you can watch from anywhere in the world as long as you have a, a good connection. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, you can watch it on your phone or a tablet, a PC, a laptop, whatever you got. Anyway, uh, I'm Todd Blonius along with Ben Chelnitsky and our uh, cameraman Jeremy Meserve bringing you all of tonight's action as the Marauders try to improve to 3-2, and two, get back over 500 for the first time since uh, beating Cambridge back in week one. And uh, getting all sorts of momentum for the Marauders uh, could improve to 2-0 and in division play and uh, we'll be traveling to Arlington for a game next Saturday. Now again, uh, we don't usually cover the road games here at BH BHS Sports TV. Uh, uh, ben, but for those people watching on the live stream, next weekend's game at Arlington is actually a Saturday game at noontime, uh, not a Friday night game as most of them have been. I know part of the reason, and we had a Thursday night game, uh, the game two weeks ago against Westford, I mean, part of the reason we talked talked about this a couple weeks ago is the shortage of uh, high school officials and uh, ends up leading to uh, them having to move some of the games around on the calendar. Here is Adrian Garung on third down, and he'll pick up the first as he gets down to the Lexington 45-yard line as he just continues to pile up the yardage, as Ben mentioned, uh, close to 150 yards for Garung. And, of course, we mentioned he had 200 yards and three touchdowns against these Minutemen last year. You know it's all good, Ben, when the Belmont Marching Band plays the uh, yep. BHS fight song. Means they've either scored a touchdown or gotten a first down. Either way, it's uh, everything's coming up uh, maroon and uh, blue and white for the Belmont Marauders here. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Arno hands, uh, no, he fakes it to Garung. He's going to keep it himself, turn in the corner, and uh, he'll get out of bounds close to another first down. Looks like, he, looks like he picked up about uh, six, so it'll be second and four. I mean, the Lexington defense at this point, Ben, is just, you know, what do you do? I mean, it's like trying to pick your poison. Who do they think's getting the ball, you know? I mean, Arno, too, in this game has been so good at, like, faking those handoffs. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, to, to Garung, who is uh, – actually, Garung just came out, and now uh, – we got Chauvet back in there. He'll take the uh, handoff on second down. And he'll get down to uh, about 35. Picked up a few yards. 
He's right near the first down marker. Well, now they're going to drop it back. It looks like he's at the 37, so it'll be third and two. Yeah, he got a few yards, Ben, and uh, yeah, it's going to bring up third down. And uh, is Chauvet staying in, or did they uh, switch back to... No, Chauvet's going to stay in here on third and two. He is lined up a step behind and to the left of quarterback Jaden Arno. And he'll take the handoff from Arno, Chave will, and he will get the first down. Nice running there, and also dragging a big tackler, number 77, James Mooring, who is listed, because we've got the uh, heights and weights on the Lexington roster, 6'4", 225. Nice job there by Chave uh, to kind of drag him along for the, uh, for the first down. Chauvet, one of the 18 seniors uh, on the Belmont squad. What Belmont lacks in uh, necessarily roster numbers, they more than make up for in senior experience. So these guys have been playing football here at Belmont uh, for several years, and that, that helps a lot. This is the third year Jaden Arno has been the uh, starting quarterback. He takes the high snap there. And again, this is called making something out of nothing. Because Arno was able to reach up and uh, pull down that high snap, he got back to the line of scrimmage instead of it being a big loss on the play. Meanwhile, number three, Paula Gresta is injured on the field from Lexington. Hmm. Paula Gresta, he's listed on the, uh, the roster as a quarterback, but actually uh, in the, uh, the Boston Globe this week, he was named uh, one of the Eastern Mass High School Players of the Week uh, as a free safety, he's a junior. Uh, last week, he came up with an interception, two blocked punts, and a 53-yard scoop and score, a fumble recovery, and touchdown in the fourth quarter. As as we mentioned earlier, Lexington came back uh, all the way back from a 24-0 deficit to beat Arlington 27-24. And I guess he also, according to the uh, report from the Globe, he also did play a little bit of quarterback. He is listed on the roster as a quarterback. Did he uh, get off under his own power there, Ben? I wasn't. Uh, was I'm he, not sure. He was okay. Well, he, I think he's he's not still on the field. Well, I think he might have to come out for a play regardless. But uh, yeah, I mean, we have you know we've not even called his number tonight, uh, Paul Agresta. Uh, but yeah, obviously he had a big uh, a big game last week in uh, Lexington's win. Here's Arno looking, and oh. it's through the hands of Logan that time, incomplete. It was, it was the same slant play that it looked like Arno ran back in the first half, which Logan caught and was able to run uh, about uh, 40 yards for a touchdown. One of Logan's two touchdown receptions on the night from Arno that time uh, could not connect, so it's going to be third and long. This time Logan is the lone receiver on the far side with three receivers split here to the near side. And Garung to Arno's left. He's throwing it. Yeah, Arno is back to throw. He's, he's scrambling. Yeah, he's got no one open, so he'll keep it himself. And he's going to try to run for the first down, and it looks like he's going to get it. He's turning the corner. He might down. have more than that. Heading for the end zone, Jaden Touchdown. Arno! Touchdown, Marauders! And now Arno, part of three touchdowns on the night, two touchdown passes, and now a touchdown run of about 35 yards, and uh, the offensive onslaught continues for the Marauders tonight, Ben. Marauders are up 35 to seven. I mean, that was some run, wasn't it, Ben? Yeah. I mean, just, uh, he started on the far side of the field, had nobody open, and by the end of the play, he's run all the way. I mean, that might have been 35 yards in the stat sheet, but he probably ran about closer to 50 yards, given he had to come all the way from the far to the near side of the field. Lassiter's point after is up and it's good. good. Yeah, he's been perfect tonight, too. Austin Lassiter really showing off his leg today. He absolutely has. Uh, you're right, Ben. One of those extra points was actually a 25-yard extra point uh, after a Belmont penalty. So it is now 36-7 in favor of Belmont, 8.51 to go 
here in the fourth quarter. Those are the first points scored by either team here in the second half. And all on the legs of Jaden Arno, who uh, certainly we saw him running so effectively a couple weeks ago in that uh, game against Westford. But as I said earlier tonight, Ben, this is what, I mean, that's what Arno can do is he, you know, you may be able to cover all his receivers and he's still going to find a way to beat you. That was a third and long play, and yet he had no problem running in the open field, getting the first down, and then getting all the way to the end zone. And now Lassiter will uh, kick off and... So I was just I was gonna say kind of as a force of habit, he's gonna boom this one down the field, but no, he hasn't done that tonight. He has been squibbing them, and uh, that actually uh, led to the Marauders. Well, no, this time it is more of a line drive, and that one will probably roll its way into the end zone. So that's the closest we've seen to a boom tonight on Lassiter's yeah. kickoffs. <laughs> line drive, and it'll be uh, first and 10 for Lexington starting at their own 20, or 25, is it? I forget, I, I know it's 25 now in the pros. Is it still? I thought it was still 20 in uh, high school. Actually, yeah, it looks like they're going to line it at the 20. Yeah. It's easy to kind of fall into, you know, you watch enough, you know, you watch the Patriots enough, although this year I'm not sure that's a good thing. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, you're used to those, you know, you watch enough NFL games, you're used to the kickoffs because they changed the rule a few years back to the 25-yard line. But uh, here in high school, at least here in Massachusetts, uh, MIA rules were still uh, doing uh, the... Uh, touchbacks to the 20-yard line. So that's where Lexington will start this drive with 8.51 to go here in the ball game. And Lexington really needs, I mean, outside of that one big play they had from uh, the, the Adam O'Shaughnessy passing the flat to, uh, to Mao, I mean, they've really had nothing else tonight. And uh, that will continue here as it is a, a very short cane short gain there uh, not sure who uh, ran with the ball because again there was a swarm of maroon jerseys uh, all over that running back uh, for Lexington actually did gain them two or three yards I guess they're gonna say two so it's second and eight So Shaughnessy with uh, Christian Flores uh, alongside. And uh, well, that time it was uh, number 40 uh, getting the ball, Colwell. And uh, they tried to stretch out the Marauder defense. And now we're going to have a, we have a timeout as we have an injured uh, Belmont player down on the field. And... Uh, it is literal. Uh, he is literally right behind Coach uh, Coach McCray, so we cannot uh, make out who who that is. Anyway, clock stops here with 7:51 to go in the fourth quarter. Todd Bloniar is alongside uh, B BMC volunteer and BHS freshman uh, Ben Jelnitsky. And uh, Ben, uh, any uh, other thoughts you have? Here? I mean, obviously some good news here because uh, oh, that's Ryan Halloran who got banged up in the game a couple of weeks ago and he's kind of hobbling off. Uh, might be something with his ankle, I, I guess. Uh, um, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, that you know, a couple of weeks ago when we saw Halloran leave the game in the fourth quarter, it might have been a key part of uh, Marauders coming up just a little bit short against the uh, the ghosts of Westford Academy. Uh, this week uh, appears the game is well in hand, so uh, you just hope it is nothing too serious for Halloran. Uh, again, one of those senior captains. Uh, he'll be back ready to go next week at Arlington. Meanwhile, uh, Flores goes in motion. O'Shaughnessy will roll left, and he's being chased down, and... Uh, Number 55 of the Marauders, Alexander Hoffman. Got a hand on that throw by O'Shaughnessy, and that's why that thing looked like kind of a wounded duck going uh, down the field and the pass falling incomplete. And uh, that was third down, so now it's going to be fourth down, and uh, Minutemen will have to uh, punt it away. Down by 29 points here in the fourth quarter.
you know, even with some of the Marauders' recent success against this Lexington team, Ben, usually the games have been pretty close. Uh, this yeah. is, uh, I can't remember the last time uh, the Marauders uh, blew out a Lexington uh, team as uh, this was a tried to angle the kick. That was uh, number six, John Kafalis, a, a junior, trying to angle that kick, and it was very short. Where are they spotting the ball here? It's going to be in Lexington territory. That, that's going to probably be about something uh, constituting about a 10-yard punt for uh, Kafalas. Belmont has the ball at the 35 with 7.23 to go. Let's see if the Marauders uh, make some other changes here on offense with the game pretty much in hand, uh, particularly... Uh, I think largely based on the ineffectiveness of Lexington's offense. Belmont's going to take a timeout here with 7.23 to go. As uh, maybe Coach McRae's trying to figure out how many subs he wants to put in at this point. Certainly going to need a sub for Ryan Halloran over at left tackle. Uh, we'll see if there's any others. But uh, yeah, I mean, what other, any other stats you've been kind of following along here, uh, Ben, as we uh, kind of wind our way through this final quarter? Um. Jaden Arno has passed two touchdowns to Brian Logan, and he's ran one for himself. Yeah, that last one was about a about a 35, 40 yard run, which uh, again, literally ran all across the field. He ran more than that, but uh, that's all he'll get credit for on the stat sheet. Uh, yeah, Marauders again. We mentioned will travel to Arlington next week to take on the Spy Ponders, who. Uh, Lost last week to these Lexington Minutemen, blowing a 24-0 lead. So Marauders really have a chance here uh, to uh, start off the Middlesex League Liberty Division schedule with three consecutive wins. Which with these shortened seasons now, the way it works, uh, you know, you play about seven or eight games. Uh, and the Marauders will be playing eight games before they decide who uh, goes to the playoffs. And uh, Marauders will be in an excellent position to clinch one of those Division II playoff berths. Uh, Marauders are making some substitutions here. That is number 22, David Maya. D David Maya. He's a uh, he's just the sophomore, as uh, uh, legendary announcer Keith Jackson would say. He's in the game. He picks up about three yards. And we also have a uh, substitution of quarterback handing off to uh, Maya. That is number seven, Isaiah Ars Valone. Yeah, well, see, again, we, we talked about this earlier, right, Ben? We, you know, he's listed on the roster as an athlete as opposed yep. to having a position. And uh, we've seen him play. This is probably like the third different position we've seen him play. And now, now at quarterback earlier, he was catching, he was going out for passes again with Arno at quarterback. And now he's in there running the offense himself. Yeah, uh, Coach McCray looks like he's cleaned out the bench here uh, of what there is of it. Uh, again, we, <laughs> Marauders only have 31 players on the roster. Uh, Andre Chavushian is uh, split out to the far side. A little bit of a high snap, and Ars Valone will have to keep this one himself. And he's running and still running, and he hasn't been brought down yet. Wow. Ars Valone with the first down. Yeah, what a run. Isaiah Ars Valone, again, one of 18 seniors on this team and uh, definitely showing all of that ATH on that move. <laughs> Basically fighting off about four or five Lexington tacklers. Just under six minutes in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I'm looking at some other guys that are in there right now. Number 19, Thomas Dolan is in the far side slot. Number 32, Michael Farah is now lined up next to Ars Valone in the backfield. And he'll take the handoff on first down and he'll plunge forward for a couple. Right behind the blocking of William Lockwood who checks into the game, he's a sophomore. There are a few sophomores on this varsity roster and looks like Coach McCray is playing all of them pretty much at this stage of the ball game. I'll try quickly to see if there's anybody else that uh, I have not mentioned yet. 26 is Declan Doherty. He's in the game for Belmont. And uh, lining up to the uh, far side, he's split out there. 
Number nine, Casey Regan, who had a big interception in the first quarter to help uh, the Marauders get off to a strong start. This time, Ars Valone will get tackled at about the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be third down. A bit high of a snap. Yeah, how about some props for the uh, sophomore Casey Regan, number nine. He's in there on offense right now. Earlier in the game, uh, coming out of the defensive backfield to uh, intercept uh, Adam O'Shaughnessy in the first minute of the ball game after the Marauders had already scored a touchdown. And uh, one play later, Adrian Garung runs in and <laughs> he got enough. And right there, Marauders are up 15 nothing, and they've just been pouring it on since, uh, leading 36 to seven now in the closing minutes of the ball game. 79, Seamus Murphy, another sophomore in there on the uh, O-line right now. Ars Valone, he will hand off to Farah. Farah turning the corner over there. Check that, sorry, 26, that's Doherty, Declan Doherty. These are some numbers now. I Now I have to kind of keep glancing down at the roster because uh, I didn't have these numbers committed to memory yet. Unfortunately, uh, Doherty will be short of the first down. Fourth down. I believe uh, with the field position the way it is and the score of the ball game, um, Rodgers will probably go for it here. Um, there's really no point in, in trying a field goal at this point, and you're certainly too deep in Lexington territory to even try to punt. So uh, we'll, uh, Rodgers will get a chance to convert this uh, series of downs into a first. I believe they're on the 20-yard line. It is Sclafani and Chavushian are split to the far side right. Now it's uh, Farah, or Farah as the uh, the running back to Arsvalone's left. It's fourth and eight. We have a timeout. I don't see any flags. Timeout, Lexington. Yeah. Okay. I don't like to dwell on things like this, Ben, but I always do wonder what is compelling uh, a coach who's down by four touchdowns with three minutes to go. Like, what's, I mean, I, I'm not saying you should throw up the white, you know, you're not throwing up the white flag. You're going to fight to the final minute, but, you know, at that point, I mean, I don't know. I, their, their defense looked pretty set to me. I didn't see anything unusual, but apparently Coach Wilson did. He called a timeout there. So anyway, uh, as we mentioned, the rest of the Belmont, Bel uh, Belmont Marauders Middlesex League schedule. Next week, Marauders go to Arlington. That's a Saturday afternoon game if you're going to make the trip over to uh, Arlington High School and the uh, Spy Ponder Field or whatever they call it. <laughs> uh, then in two weeks, we'll be back here. BHS Sports TV will have coverage. Uh, Marauders against the Woburn Tanners, who might be the class of the division. Oh, that's that's going to be a penalty. On number 10, I'm going to call him out. That's John Donahue, one of the senior captains, whose number we have not even called tonight. Uh, he's usually a big part of Lexington's offense. And, uh, well, now the official, I think he, now the Marauders didn't get the first down. Now, wait a minute. If that's a personal foul, shouldn't the Marauders have gotten 15 yards and a first down? But the all I saw the referee do was point first down Lexington. What? He, he that's what he did. That looked like a pretty straightforward penalty to me. I guess did one of the other officials come up and say, well, he didn't really grab was it a face mask grab? I don't know. I mean, that kind of looked like the play. I mean, again, John Donahue, he's a big part of Lexington's, you know, offense in general. He's a senior captain. And it looked like he was very fr that looked like a play of frustration from a senior captain, just kind of like taking the Belmont uh, player and kind of slamming him to the ground. But it almost, yeah, it almost looked like kind of a, like he might have, I guess he, I thought he maybe grabbed a face mask or something or clotheslined him or, you know, uh, you can't do that. Now Coach McCray's going to call timeout here with 2.56 to go. This might actually, I don't want to say it's necessarily, I mean, I, I almost think this is kind of a smart timeout after that last play. Maybe you just want to kind of keep the, Belmont players' heads in the game and everything here. And also, just make sure, you know, you got to play a lot of guys in there right now who don't necessarily play as much. And you certainly don't want them to do anything foolish like we might have seen on that yeah. prior play, right? I mean, because ultimately, I mean, high school sports is about, you know, exhibiting good sportsmanship and yep. uh, not doing anything uh, like that previous play. Because, I mean, it looked like Donahue, that looked kind of. A, like a borderline dirty takedown, but the official said no. 
So I guess I will not dwell on it, and uh, we'll just go back to uh, to Lexington on offense here in the final three minutes. I think that's O'Shaughnessy who's still in the game. Uh, quarterback, it is number eight, and he handed off to uh, to Christian Flores, number 23. Uh, no substituting for uh, Coach Shane Wilson's offense here. He's uh, keeping most of his uh, regulars still in there till the end. Whether it's to try to make a point, maybe it's, or just maybe simply they need the reps. Uh, and this Lexington team uh, had a really good game last week coming all the way back from 24 points down to beat Arlington, but that uh, that offense uh, is not has been non-existent. A lot of that has to do with Belmont just controlling the line of scrimmage. Handoff, I think that's Flores again. Let's see, is that 20? Yeah, it is. And he didn't get a whole lot, so. You can see the Belmont defense doing a really good job. Yeah, they've really been doing this all night, Ben. I mean, we're seeing, uh, you know, now it's even the subs doing it. But, you know, earlier tonight, uh, you know, obviously uh, some of the, the big defensive starters like uh, Ryan Halloran and uh, Harrison Carlson, uh, you know, up front really kind of helping to uh, really, it's really, that's what this game has come down to, was the early Lexington turnovers, which were the only two in this game. We have had no turnover since the first minute of the ball game. Uh, and then it was that, and then from that point forward, Belmont just seemed to control the line of scrimmage. Uh, Lexington's line is given their running backs. I mean, you, you know, the wing tee is effective if you can run and if you've got a good offensive line, but not when you're being, like, beaten off the line the way the Marauders have, uh, have controlled it tonight. We're going to have another tackle for loss over there. Was that tackle 50? by Alexander Hoffman? Was that 55. Hoffman? Oh, okay. Yeah, that was. Just under a minute left in the fourth quarter. The Belmonts winning, thirty-six to seven. Yeah, this is it. Final minute here from Harris Field, and uh, Marauders are going to win this one comfortably. It's a fourth down, and. Uh, Lexington does bring out the punt team because uh, unless they take a delay of game penalty, they're going to probably have to kick this one away. We're now down to 30 seconds remaining, but just an impressive win on both sides of the ball tonight uh, by the Marauders who, for the second straight week in Liberty Division play, come up victorious. I mean, the stunner at Winchester last week against an undefeated red and black team as we've got a fake punt. Kafalas trying to keep it himself. Nowhere near the first down marker. There's a late flag thrown in. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. Might have to, might have one more snap coming here from the Marauders as they will take a knee. Not even sure what the penalty here is. It's probably some sort of an unsportsmanlike conduct personal foul. Uh, I don't know on who. Is it going to be on Belmont? Who again, Belmont's had the majority of the... Oh! Well, they're saying it's a personal foul, Belmont. They're giving Lexington the first down, although it's all academic at this point as we, uh, they'll have time to run one more play. So we will not have a victory formation snap by the Marauders, which is a little too bad because they, they deserve it the way they've played on both sides tonight. And I guess the defense will have one more chance to make a flat-out stop of the Minutemen. All the Minutemen can really do by this point is throw a Hail Mary. Yeah, and I'm not even sure, Ben, that uh, Adam O'Shaughnessy could throw it uh, the uh, 70, <laughs> 65, 70 yards that would be required here. Um, you could probably throw something about 20 yards, and then maybe you could have a bunch of laterals or whatever. Let's see. O'Shaughnessy uh, in the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Flores, and that's going to be it. Final Marauders in to make the tackle include uh, Noah Hill and uh, Callum McDermott. I think we almost got through all 31 players on the Belmont roster there. I think we mentioned all their names at least once tonight. Wow, what a game. Belmont Marauders improving to 3-2 and two on the season. Coach McCray improving to 3-0 and oh against these Lexington Minutemen. Marauders improved to 2-0 and oh in Middlesex League Liberty Division play. Going to Arlington next week with a chance to uh, to make it three in a row. Uh, just an impressive win tonight. 36-7 is your final score. Ben, your, your final thoughts on this one. The Marauders really dominated the game today. 
Yeah, it really did. Both sides of the ball, they took advantage of the early Lexington turnovers. Uh, two within the first minute. Marauders turned those into 15 quick points, and it was just all Belmont from that point forward as they just controlled the line of scrimmage. Great night for uh, the senior captains, Jaden Arno. Two touchdown passes to Brian Logan, and then the touchdown run himself. Then Adrian Garung with what you said, about 150 yards rushing before yeah, they took him more. out. Yeah, okay, and then uh, two yards uh, or two touchdowns uh, for that. So that's going to do it here from Harris Field. Again, thank you, Ben Chelnitsky, tonight uh, for uh, joining us here uh, in the broadcast booth, and also big thanks to Jeremy Mazur. For everyone here at uh, BHS Sports TV, my name is Todd Bloniars, wishing you good night from Harris Field. This has been a BHS Sports TV production.